Conversations. Interacting with different characters is an important part of the game. To start dialogue, click on a character if, and if they are set to talk to you, a dialogue interface will show up. From conversations you can find out valuable, valuable, valuable plot information, clues and even receive tasks. Choose lines carefully, careless words can cause resentment and provoke a fight. Get a lot of new events here. We get some items. Let's see. Inventory. Third letter from Kronos. A yellow envelope, thick and crisp. Inside is a solemn letter printed in a font that mimics real handwriting. There is also a foil postcard and a ticket stub to Crystal Sands, a city near the dome. Read. Dear candidate, please accept our sincerest congratulations. From this day forward you are officially part of Cronus rank. Of THE Cronus rank. Our foundation is not merely the wealthiest and fastest growing company in the world. Above all, it is an organization of people, brave soldiers, astute scientists, talented engineers, brilliant managers and other employees other employees meaning us. These people form a huge but cohesive team and we hope you will soon find your own place in it and make some friends along the way. We are, we are all united by a common goal. We believe in a bright future for every human being on earth and we are prepared to work hard to achieve it. Thank you for joining us. Okay, An inactive selectron, electronic key for doors within Kronos Cronus facilities insert into the receiver mounted on the door frame and the system will verify your access, not activate it. Combons, official Cronus currency used everywhere under the dome. Scanner, a portable, portable device for scanning relics, dead bodies, mechanisms and more. Favorite toy of the white wing and the main, main means of obtaining valuable scientific data in the world under the dome connects to your Cirrus and syncs with its database. Data. Newcomer to Concord. You left Spire Station on a transport pod. Your journey under the dome begins. In the year 1971, in a stretch of uncharted desert at the edge of the world, the dome, a structure of unknown origin, covering a significant part of the wasteland was found. Cronus Foundation was created to study the find and build a developed infrastructure to extract and research samples of technologies unknown to mankind. Scientists, mercenaries, romantics and adventurers from all over the world enlisted under the dome to take part in the greatest discovery in human history. You are one of them. Who knows, perhaps you will discover something that will change the destiny of all mankind. By taking part in the Glean Slate program, you have a chance to start life anew. The Cronus Recruiting Service pulls you out of jail and enrolls you into the Orange Wing. Construction, excavation projects in anomalous zones. Participating in scientific experience, experiments, you never know what an Orange Wing employee will have to do. It's hard work. At some point you'll need to decide whether it beats a life behind bars. What's this? Right. Uh, yeah, we read all these before. We have no messages, we have nothing in the codex, no statistics to speak of, quests, this seems to be a timed quest, plus 15 you've been sent to work in Orange Wing. Shows how at ease you are among these non-law abiding people. Right. Gain 24 experience. Well, let's, let's talk to people then. Here we have Morty James. A guy wearing thick spectacles thrusts out a sweaty hand. Monty James, Silverwing. Monty James, Silverwing. 
Right, he's a uh, more of a politician type. He glances down at your badge. Ah, it's you. I found your file extremely interesting, and your CV wonderful, I inspiring, really. Yeah. When I had the opportunity to look over the files of my future colleagues, I couldn't resist. I don't want to sound boastful, but silver level clearance has its advantages. Monty winks. Ask him what he saw in your file. Monty makes a ring with his thumb and forefinger. Uh, you were number 63,784 on the waiting list, but you were lucky enough to get into the dome after only 16 months. Besides that, uh, zero, nada, absolutely nothing. You're a dark horse for both the Foundation and myself. Uh, how exactly did you end up in this wing? Let's see. We can just say nothing, but we can answer that you've come to terms with your criminal past and attend to mend your ways. You can sneer. You're gonna raise a real ruckus here and build, in, build your own new gang. Explain that you didn't have much choice. It was the dome or life in prison. Let's uh... This guy sounds uh, rather slippery, so let's uh, act in kind and say that we've uh, come to terms with our criminal past and we're going to mend our ways. James gives you an encouraging but dry smile. It's never too late to begin anew. Or so it's written in the official Cronus leaflet. Cronus, a foundation created to explore and exploit the dome. De facto dictates the dictates the prices and conditions of access to relics and other forefathers' technologies. You work for Cronus, and Cronus cares about you. <laughs> An uncomfortable silence rises between you, and Monty abruptly changes the subject. He taps the narrow illuminator panel with one finger. Uh, look, there's a storm rising. The lightning is strange. Green. Should lightning be green? Uh, this is my first sandstorm. Anomaly. General term for a vari variety of physico-chemical phenomena of uncertain nature. Endemic to the dome. Recommended approach. Steer clear or die. Silver, answer an uh, silver wing answer not available. I had a look at the settings and I actually turned ne uh, it by default the option to see unavailable answers is turned off so you can't see options that are unavailable to you which I am leaving that way because you get a bit of uh, I don't know I think I've, I've, heard <laughs> I've heard someone mention the FOMO effect fear of missing out when you see the, uh, like oh I could have I could have done this if I had more charisma or I could have done this if I had this skill etc etc so better not to have that but then again this 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 option does show up so that's kind of weird really so yeah just we'll leave leave him to his uh, pondering about strange anomalies Quinton Bisley the orange is dressed in a new jumpsuit. The shiny badge on his chest reads, Quentin Bisley, laborer. He's side-eyeing the screen skeptically. Despite his tired, grim expression, his gaze is open and friendly. However, the general impression is unmistakable. There's something frightening about Bisley. Um... Let's uh, ask him how he ended up in prison. The orange's face stretches into a broad smile, bearing his dentures to the world. Like everyone, duh, in a black car, under guard. Huh. There's other guys too, the ones who go through the front door. He nods at the black winged woman beside him. Her nose wrinkles in displeasure, but she says nothing. As you're about to step away, Bisley nudges you on the thigh at the same time pressing something cold and metallic into your hand. You open your hand to discover a pair of lock picks. Just in case, Bisley whispers with a wink. 
So we can return his wing, conceal the lockpick and move away or loudly inform the black wing guard that the employee busily just passed you a set of li uh, lockpicks. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll return the wing, wink and conceal the lockpicks and move away. You might have use for those. We'll do a quick save there. So let's talk to this black wing uh, employee called Elsa Olofsson. A wiry woman in black wing overalls gestures imperiously for you to approach. You keep your hands where I can see them. Uh, we can ask her to remove our cuffs, which I'm guessing she won't, so why even bother? But let's just for the hell of it. Elsa's expression runs from shock to amusement, then settles on a confused smirk. Looks like you've given her a good laugh, at least. What? No way. Huh. Igor P Potanin. Of the blue wing, I'd take it, maybe. A man with a mustache and a blue jumpsuit is standing at the window, studying the construction site below through the occasional break in the clouds. His badge reads Igor Potanin, planner. The blue taps on the glass with one finger and gestures you to come and take a look. Seems like he doesn't speak English. So yeah, here it says influence 20, answer not available. So I'm really not sure why these options are showing up. I'll have a look at the settings. The blue, blue wing, Cronus Engineers and Technical Corp. Involved in repairing, maintaining and adjusting the equipment. Doesn't speak English. International Dome. Since the discovery of the dome, its exploration has its exploration has become a, an international project. Seven countries participated in the first expedition, and over time, this number has only increased. According to most recent data or data, citizens of more than 40 different countries reside under the dome today. So we'll just leave him, since we can't talk to him. But let's have a look. Actually, settings. So yeah. Show unavailable replies. No. Yes, no, yes, no. Show unavailable replies. No. Right. That's how that works. Yeah, weird. Continue. Tomoko Kim Kimura. The thin, pale young woman is sitting at the window, leaning against the illuminator. The glass is slightly fogged with her breath. She turns to you. Her shiny badge reads Tomoko Kimura, physiologist. Physiologist? We've crossed the border. No way back now. Even traveling by the funicular wasn't so... thrilling. The white presses small hands to her blushing cheeks. Funicular. The city of Crystal Sands, standing at the foot of the dome, and the spire station are connected by the line of the passenger and freight funicular. Specially equipped cabins ply along the line, lay directly on the surface of the dome, transporting Kronos Foundation employees and cargo. The white presses, small hands, blushing cheeks, right? The white, white wing. Specialized in scientific research, Medi uh, medical personnel are, are a part of the wing as well. You were thinking, why have no children been born under the dome? I've got a working hypothesis, but I'm not ready to share it yet. She says softly, as if answering a question you didn't ask. Let's see, perception 5. Ask Kimu Kimura if she sees the dark stain on the outer surface of the dome. Let's ask her about this. Kimura peers through the glass in the direction you indicate. Oh, that's the aircraft that crashed into the dome during the first expedition. I believe that's a wing fragment, and there's some white canvas. What do you think that is? Maybe a parachute? The right. white shakes her head, bewildered. I just can't believe it. It's all true. We're on our way to meet the future. 
Ask what she meant by we've crossed the border. Kimura shoots you a surprised look. You're familiar with the details of the briefing, right? To put it simply, the dome is a selectively permeable environment. Dome, the most famous and most infamous creation of the forefathers. Indestructible and semi impervious to living matter, the dome covers about 30,000 square kilometers of desert. The white draws an invisible hemisphere in the air. Inorganic objects may exit the dome without difficulty, but any living creature dies if transported back to the outside world. That's why we're all stuck here for an indefinite period of time. Again, we see an unavailable option. Wonder aloud why things happen that way. Kimura is eyeing the dome's mesh glittering in the sunlight. Supposedly, it's something to do with the atmospheric composition, but it's a weak theory. The difference of the air within the dome is so insignificant as to fall within the margin of error. Or to put it more simply, there is no difference. Hmm. She shoots a quick glance at the silver and lowers her voice. I heard a rumor, or a conspiracy theory, that we can leave the dome at any time. We've simply been told we can't. If you ever decide to test this hypothesis, don't forget to leave me something in your will. Huh. So we've talked to everyone. Porthole door. Let's try to use this. Stopping by the door's porthole, you watch as the ground slowly approaches. It looks brown black through the tinted glass and smoky blue at the horizon. It almost seems like the clouds are pulling apart there. You carefully review your briefing as you look downwards. When you arrive, they'll deliver you to the base and you'll be assigned to one of the dome's many construction sites. Though even working all day beneath the burning sun would be preferable to being a participant of the White Wings experiments. You were told about those experiments during the briefing, too. Just as you're about to move away from the window, you notice a whirlwind beginning to form above the ochre plain. The gathering storm drifts unhurriedly above the desert, a crown of green lightning flashing at its core. Clearly no ordinary weather phenomenon. It must be one of those anomalies. You freeze by the window, unable to avert your gaze. Let's see, we can stand up on your tiptoes and try to make out the building. Buildings down below, stay that way until landing. Stay where you are, trying to see if you can spot the mysterious forefathers structures until landing. Stay at the window and watch the whirlwind till the landing. Join the other group members. Let's um Yeah, I think this whirlwind is probably the most uh, interesting thing going on here. So we'll look at the whirlwind. The outlines of the landing site, blurred by clouds of dust, appear behind the greenish glass of the porthole. The capsule shudders as the braking devices engage. This is the end of the Cold War. The world econ economy now revolves around the dome and the study of its technologies. An effort shared among many nations, both capitalists and socialists. The world can rest easy. There will be no nuclear apocalypse, only collaboration in the interest of all mankind. A Pravda newspaper article. Quest updated. Camera control, can rotate, zoom in, zoom out, to return the standard view, right, proceed. Can we still talk? Not now. No. Thank you. 
Miss Noyan, let's keep it formal while we're on the job. You see, our rate of extraction far exceeded storage capacities. Oh, and what the hell is that supposed to mean, Benny? I didn't get a single word. You're such a drag when you're sober. My dear Lord, May, there's no room in the warehouse. Absolutely none. There are boxes stacked up even in the aisles. Oh, then why didn't you say that in the first place, Mr. Moner? All right, I'll unload it here if there's no room inside. No, May, wait. That's against the rules. Oh, sensitivity is pretty high there. Come here. Come on now, or you'll miss everything. A cheerful man in a white lab coat grabs you by the sleeve. A badge reading Ludovico Nuzzi, scientific analyst, export department, dangles loosely on his clean uniform, which still smells pungently of washing powder. Look over there. He points upward with a sharp, wide gesture and hands you his field binoculars. Uh, yeah, let's take the binoculars and look what he's pointing at. You raise the binoculars to your eyes. Under fourfold magnification, the whirling cloud above the rust-colored plains looks even stranger. Its core glows with flickering green light and flashes rhythmically. And that rhythm seems to form a complicated pattern. Nazi bends close to your ear. Fascinating. You want me to bring some filters? If we intercept the red and blue spectrums, we'll see something amazing. It's like a signal, some kind of message. Reconnaissance 30. Stop watching the storm and look at the horizon. Yeah, well, seeing as it's an option, let's try it. Without tearing your gaze away from the binoculars, you turn around slowly, studying the dome's horizon. It's somewhat unexpected that the dome looks horribly empty. Your eyes find some construction pits dug directly in the sand, and concrete blocks laid beside them. There are almost no roads, or not sealed ones. Only one highway with yellow surface marking stretches among the sand drifts. Um, ask him what scientific analyst export department means. Or tell him that we need to go. Yeah, let's let's ask him about that. The scientist looks blankly at you, then down at his lab coat. Ah, this? This? He lets out a blaring laugh. Ludovico points at the building behind him. I work in Concord Station, categorizing relics. My job is to classify them by rarity. Then the blues package them, silvers issue the documentation, and oranges move them to the cargo capsule. Just like the one you arrived in. Let's see, what did he actually say? We're at Concord Station. Relics. Objects of forefathers' material culture. Usually comes from a dark and mysterious dungeon. Huh. Nazi points upward. Then the capsule takes the relics way up there, all the way to the spire, then to crystal sands by the funicular. They get auctioned off and turned into money. It's not like I endorse this, but we all like ourselves a good paycheck, right? The spire, the transit station built around the aperture of at the top of the dome, relics are moved up to it. Capsules with new employees, food and equipment descend from it. Crystal sand. The city at the foot of the dome. Uh, it's from here. Fresh provisions, weapons, equipment and new crones and employees are delivered to the Spire Station. The funicular. That is... Uh, right. That, uh, City of Crystal Sands, standing at the foot of the dome and the Spire Station are connected by the line of the passenger and freight funicular. Yeah, we were just uh, we were just on that, I think. He offers you his binoculars once again. Do you want to have a look at the Spire? It's amazing. But then, you can look at the Spire anytime. Now that sandstorm, that's what's truly amazing. Well, we... We 
can go back to pick other options. So tell him that uh, we'll tell him that we need to go. Nazi looks from you to the capsule and to the landing terminal entrance. He flings his arms up. Oh, Miss Scusi! Excuse me, I'm so sorry. You'd better get going or you'll be late for check-in. Your colleagues are already inside. And the storm is growing stronger. Yeah, the storm is growing stronger. The white mutters in fascination, eyes glued to his binoculars, which is fixed on the spinning whirl of clouds. Oh, so it's my now? What happened to Miss Noya then? Christ, Benny, don't be such a wet blanket. Hey, the storm's growing strong. Come on, let's go, for real. You've got very soft hands. Did you know that? Hey, not now, please. <laughs> well, let's head inside. Whatever the fanatics call the dome, an alien colony ship, a gift to humanity from another world, a remnant of Atlantis, a prison for dark forces, a magical lab laboratory of ancient Egypt. Personally, I think the definition doesn't matter. What we are going to do with it, that's what matters. Attention, attention. please handle relics. Terminal, our quest is updated, let's see. After your arrival at the Crystal Sands, you were escorted to the cable car for Spire Station, taking your place in a transport capsule alongside five other new employees. Fifteen meters of ascent through the fog and clouds and you've made it. Welcome to the dome. Throughout the game you will perform various tasks, some of which lead you through the story as well as others that reveal different aspects of life under the dome. You can always find out the task sta status and read the details in the data section. Jakey, proceed. Ah, so we can actually just zoom in and out with the mouse wheel instead of the brackets. Although the brackets are smoother. Close the door behind us. Let's talk to Tuyen. So this is no narration here. The young blue is closely stuttering, studying a com communication schematic in his sick. Uh, Ceres? A bundle of wires is hanging from an open fuse box nearby. He smells strongly of cheap cigarettes. His shiny bed says, Tuyen Young, a uh, communications engineer. I'm listening. Hello, can I help you? Offering you a hand. Um, yeah, w uh, ask what he's doing. He taps lightly on the screen. I'm trying to calcula calculate the optimal route for telecommunication cables. These cables connect the entire dome. Here at Concord, they form a hub and run to up to the spire. Yoon's face turns very serious. This cable is the only thing connecting the dome to civilization. And if it happens to break... Civilization. Political situation. After the dome was discovered in 1971 and... With the beginning of international cooperation on its development, a thaw ensued in the Cold War. The doomsday clock minute hand has been pushed back and now shows 18 minutes before midnight. The engineer looks at you meaningfully. Meaningfully. Therefore, my mission is to ensure a stable connection and secure line, which is impossible without proper documentation. The way they're doing it here is a shame. A person could do time for that back where I'm from. Uh, we can't answer. We're not bluing, so we can't do pick that option. Say that you don't see the point of his complaint. Cronus has created an impressive communication system indeed. Ask what about it is a shame in his opinion. Ask his opinion about Concord. Say you've learned everything you wanted to know and won't be bothering anymore. Um, yeah, let's ask him about his opinion. Why is this a shame? Yoon assumes a disapproving expression. The cables are laid improperly. 
and various factors are negatively affecting the signal strength. Wild animals damage the equipment as well. With a developed professional culture and quality control system, most of these problems could be solved in short order. Uh, ask what animals he's talking about. He looks around and lowers his voice. They don't tell you new ones much. I suppose it's because of some security order, but in my opinion this whole thing reeks of sabotage. And in theory, some silvers should be imprisoned for that. Sorry, I got distracted. You were asking about animals? Wolpers. Huge bald shrews. Very unpleasant creatures. Can I help you with anything else? He adjusts his collar. Uh, ask his opinion about Concord. Let's ask him. Yoon talks at the blue collar, cutting into his neck. The idea itself is, is impressive, but the execution suffers, suffered some failures. It's obvious the capitalistic system is obsolete and cannot support such grand scale projects. Right. Say you've learned everything you wanted to know and won't be bothering him anymore. Yoon bids you farewell with a firm handshake. Thank you for understanding. I'm not used to getting distracted and sloppy, especially on such an important issue. He returns to his calculations on his Sarah screen. Come back again. A Vega drinks vending machine. Let's check that out. There's a list of products for sale inside the illuminated recess in the right part. Cherry flavored chicho, soda, beef flavored noodle, morning dunes lager, dark secret stout, wayward cigarettes. Uh, we do have we do have some money. Uh, well, it's in se it's supposedly the seventies, so let's buy some cigarettes. Why not? The bill acceptor noisily sucks in money. A pack of cigarettes rolls out into the dispensing tray with a low noise. As soon as you reach out to pick the, your pick up your purchase, another pack rolls into the tray almost silently. You're in luck. So yeah, we uh, we don't have enough money for that anymore. We could buy another something else, but let's walk away. So yeah, because of our fortune being high, we got two packs of cigarettes. Um, perception plus two, charisma plus one. So we can consume it, add to the belt. All right, this is our belt, it seems. Yeah, we have the lockpick. That uh, the uh, the other uh, orange employee gave us, or the orange wing member, convict, ex-con, I should say. We can look in the trash can. Why not? Might be useful for crafting. Uh, a lump, so we'll take that. Nope. A lump of greasy soil. Sooner or later, it accumulates in the pockets of anyone who likes digging in flower pots. Why not? And this one's just been emptied, it seems. Another uh, Mr. Rayhead, vending could you system. Bring me a cup of coffee, please. Hmm. Colleague. Well, uh, never mind. Let's uh, talk to Monty James here. Silver wearing, thick glittering spectacles. Hang on. A silver wearing, thick glittering spectacles is sitting on a orange couch nervously fingering his badge which reads Monty James Monty James a large suitcase r suitcase rests at his feet with a leaflet about the dome perched on top good day to you he looks up and studies your face with a squint ah oh, it's you do you like the inside of the dome 
Uh, say you're not ready to answer yet, not enough time has passed to form a clear impression. Impression. Say you expected something more, say you find it fascinating and mir miraculous in every sense of the word. Uh, yeah, we just got it, we're not really... Uh, we're not really sure yet what to think of all this. Monty stares moodily down at his suitcase. My first impression is unfortunately not very positive. They forgot to add my name to the new recruits manifest. Can you imagine? Uh, Offer to try and regist register him in the terminal. Well, we're not very tech savvy, I think. Uh, Come back again. Let's uh, leave him for now. Maybe we'll. Uh, employee, come to Your the selectron desk has not been properly authorized. Please visit prison. the reception desk to register. Right. Let's talk to Dean here. Gives suicidal orders. A okay. tall receptionist watches you from behind his desk with a bored, haughty look. He waves impatiently at you to approach. The receptionist doesn't bother to hide his disgust at your orange uniform. He nods at you wordlessly, as if unwilling to waste his breath speaking to you. His metallic name tag reads, Dean Rayhead. The administrator slaps himself on the forehead. Ah, I almost forgot the regulation pre-registration greeting. Just a second. Listen to the greeting. Ray Hutt produces a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from beneath the desk, rewinds the tape to the beginning, and presses play. Hmm. The speakers explode with a harsh, crackling sound, over which the tick-tick of a metronome slowly grows louder. Solemn music begins to play. And the administrator's face takes on a serious expression. Dear employee, on behalf of the Cronus Foundation, I, Administrator Dean Rayhead, welcome you to your new life under the dome. Okay, continue. The administrator clears his throat and continues. By joining our company, you choose the path of science and progress. You are among mankind's best. And we ask that you live up to this. Dean squints down at the monitor. Deserve this title. Do your job honestly. Obey the law. Respect your colleagues and... The music fades and the administrator finishes his speech. And together we will build the best possible future for all mankind. Dean puts the tape recorder away. Now that we're done with the official greeting, I'll register you and upgrade your Selectron. Okay? We have the option to look around. What what does that do? Let's look around. The committee ads didn't lie. The interior of Concord Station looks just like the glossy brochure. The high ceiling is finished with matte light panels. The floor is slightly scratched, but nevertheless washed to a mirror finish. Lights gleam soothingly. It's clean, cozy, and bright. Dean stabs impatiently at the terminal keyboard. Name and age, please. Dean's hands hover over the keyboard. He gives you a nod. Attention. Um. Let's just dictate your information to him. You spell out your first and last names and specify your wing, profession, and test results. The administrator's fingers fly across the keyboard as he enters your information into the Cronus database. Rayhet scans the computer screen. So your position in the waiting list was 63,784. You've been assigned to Magellan Station. A special bus will bring you there after a series of briefings. Please pass me your Selectron so I can update the firmware. Dean snaps the docking port of your pass to a recess in the casing of his computer. The administrator puts your Selectron on the desktop and pushes it toward you. 
This firmware gives you access to all of the Orange infrastructure. The Orange elevator, though it's out of order right now, the residential level, the utility rooms, and limited access to a few other areas for cleaning. One more thing. Please don't try to upgrade the Selectron yourself. Dean continues. All new employees have a short list of tasks to perform on arrival. Do you want to hear all the details or just the short version? Um, well, since this is going to be our new life, basically, let's ask for the detailed explanation. Ray Hat nods and points at the ceiling. First, you need a set of combat gear. Talk to Sidney Maynard. He'll give you everything. Combat gear. Dean extends his second finger. Second, self-defense. The rules don't allow for oranges to carry weapons. But you should still know how to use one. Talk to Ms. Margarita Takachenko about that. Then you'll have to go to the training zone. Do your best not to kill the instructor, please. <laughs> the administrator straightens his third finger. According to the latest regulations, all employees must attend a briefing on psi abilities. Apply to instructor Andre Mihai. Right. Psyche and Psy Energy. Psy Energy and Psy Abilities became a serious matter of discussion soon after the first experiments with the Forefathers Technologies. According to official data, today more than 78.4% of people under the dome exhibit ps uh, Psy Abilities of various intensities that allow one to use tel tele or pyrokinetics and to influence the interlock interlock interlocutor in one way or another. Fortunately most of these abilities are weak. Scientists have found that for the presence of abilities as well as for the ability to apply them or feel their use by others a special characteristics of the body named Psyche is responsible. Dean extends his fourth finger and looks at you meaningfully. Did I tell you about the combat and tactical training? The fourth step is to visit instructor Winston Botherby. And finally, science is the overarching purpose behind everything we do here. Go to Professor Van Alden to learn how to study relics, avoid anomalies, and catalog scientific knowledge. This training is mandatory for all wings, not just white. Dean finishes. Dean catches himself. Oh, and when you're done with your trainings, proceed to the waiting room. From there, you'll travel to Magellan by bus. Say that everything's crystal clear and leave. The silver gives you another scornful look. Down the hall and left, and don't cause any trouble. As he's about to turn away, Dean suddenly remembers something. Oh yes, I sent your mail to your Kairos. Check your new messages. Well, that's all I think. Cyrus mail. Messages sent by various game characters are stored in the messages section of your Cyrus. Messages uh, from some employees and computers also end up there. All new messages are in the inbox tab. After reading, are moved to the archive tab. Well, let's see about that. Uh, no. We are still handcuffed. Inventory, move character down. Quest, inventory, graph window, map, boss, character, timer. Right, messages. Instructions for newcomers. After re registration, you must acquire the uniform, acquire the means of self-defense, and undergo basic combat training, undergo psi ability training, undergo scanning training, go to the landing zone and wait for the bus to the Magellan station. We strongly um, uh, recommend that you adhere to established standards of behavior. If you are persuaded to commit unlawful actions, contact guards on the floor. <laughs> Camera control. Serious mail, quests, right, quests, 
Uh, you arrived at Concord Station and experienced the full corporate routine. After all, a huge and Byzantine bureaucracy must persist, even under the dome. Just great, Mr. Monty James. With luck like yours, I... See ya. Let's see if we can help him. Offer to try and re register him in the terminal. Are you for real? That would be incredibly kind of you. Maybe my optimism about this place and the people working here were, was justified after all. See ya. We cheered him up quite a lot. But let's see if we can actually do Kronos something. Kronos Corporation reminds you. Please use a public terminal to access your account. Terminals. Throughout the game you. you will often have to interact with various computers. Terminals contain useful information and allow you to turn on disabled mechanisms and open locked doors. If you accidentally or intentionally killed one of the main characters, then information on how to progress further in the game can almost always be found in their terminal. Uh, the Kronos logo flickers pale blue on the terminal display. Register Monty James. Register Monty James in Orange Wing. What a great prank. Log in as user. Step away from the terminal. <sighs> that is tempting. Hmm. Let's just try to register Monty James. Uh, you enter Monty James Dead in the system, noting that the registration form for Silvers has some extra fields. Apparently, Cronus sees his manager as a special cast. Once you've double checked your input, you press send. With the beep, the system accepts the data and redirects you to the main menu. Main menu user page. Greetings, employee. Please enter a command to select an option. Download your personal mail to your Cirrus. So we also already did that. Read the latest Cronus news. Stack your st check your employee's employment status or log out. Let's read the news. A mishmash of symbols fill the screen. Taking a closer look, you realize the characters represent a photo. The image depicts a flaming ball floating above the laboratory workbench. Three figures stand behind it, scientists presumably, but you cannot make out their faces. Enter read to read the article. The image of the scientist and the relic is replaced with text. Relic, objects of forefather material culture, usually comes from a dark and mysterious dungeon. Five years of the future, humanity celebrates discovery of the Dome Day. You skim the article, mostly a chest thumping ex ex exhortation on the supposed future of human civilization. Uh, menu to go back to the menu. Stat. Query executed flashes on the screen followed by this text. Department Orange Wing, clearance level 1. Procedural actions, receive uniform and weapons, complete military training, complete scanner training, report to administrator. Menu, uh, yeah. Log out. So let's start uh, to Mr. Monty James. Would you bring me a cup of coffee? That we helped him out. Mm. Monty sunk deep in thoughts and also into the cushions on the chair. As you approach, he greets you with a slight nod but remains immersed in his reverie. Tell Monty you've added him to the de to the database. Monty takes off his spectacles, rests them on the cushion beside him, and envelops you in a big hug. He puts his glasses back on. Thank you for such an impressive example of cooperation with a stranger. Perhaps the dome really is a special place. I hope to see you again soon. And he's gone. Uh, let's see, actually. how. So, right, we're getting pretty close to leveling. Which is great, because then we'll, uh, we can search this briefcase now. Which is still locked. So he left his briefcase for some reason. Kronos Corporation reminds you. 
Please use a public terminal to access your account. So Thank he you. said we should go down the hall to the left, so I take it he means this door. But no, this is uh, the bathroom. Well, let's check this out. Hand dryer, can we use it? Status effects. Various actions such as eating food and taking medicine may impose certain status effects on you. They can last for different times and be positive or negative. Some attacks and abilities can also apply a status effect that changes the characters, char characteristics of the target. For example, bleeding or poisoning will gradually reduce health. Some shaking going on here. We can use a mirror. You wink at your reflection and we get self-confidence from it. Plus one charisma. Minus five heat resistance, plus five cryogenic resistance. Let's see. Vacuum cleaner. Silent buzzing. Vigorous. Go get him, tiger. Plus one initiative. I take it, uh, yeah, we wink at the reflection again. Can we use the toilet? Sound of running water. Relieved. A small amount of radiation has been purged from the body. Wow. A broken toilet. Search the broken toilet. Yeah, well. May as well. Yeah, another lockpick. And plastics. You can recycle it to use to your advantage. We gained 11 experience for looking in the broken toilet bowl. Janitor's gear. Searching. That is a melee weapon. Disinfectant. Antibacterial substance based on isopropyl isopropyl alcohol destroys all bacteria known to science perhaps the unknown kinds as well let's take that let's uh, mop this model is based on the classic 1967 design developed by the RGM houseware company but after its sale the mop was significantly modified and thanks to the lightweight aluminum casing and gnarled rubber handle it immediately became a bestseller in the mop market. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's not go go around stealing mops uh, ju just yet. Ah, right, he meant probably meant down the hole the other way. Kronos Corporation reminds you, please use a public terminal to access your account. Thank you. Anna Leroy. Let's talk to Anna Leroy. Well, hello there. You see a slim, cheekbony silver woman with a red warning lamp in her hands. On the lapel of a perfectly ironed suit is a badge that says Anna Leroy Administrator. The girl waves her lamp in the air, trying to attract some attention. Valued employees, according to administrative orders of September 14th, 1976, the waiting area may be accessed through the regular staff corridor. Please be advised that this rule does not apply to newly arrived employees. She pauses and begins to cough. Shit, I thought I should cut down on the smokes. Good day, new employee. The silver nods like she's depressed. She seems to have just noticed you. Um, ask if you can go through the hall to the waiting room. No, we cannot. Uh, we first we have to do uh, the training and whatnot. Come back again. So let's move away for now. Search the container. What's in here? Simple mine clearance kit. Let's take that. 
boxes. Matches. So, I take it we can just use our cigarettes without matches. Let's talk to Sydney Maynard. Behind the storage counter, you see a small, neat guy. His gingery hair shines with something like brilliantine. His badge says, Sydney Maynard, storekeeper. Maynard. Oh, what a lovely angel. Came down from the heavens. Good morning, my lady. Is it something urgent? By the way, my name's Sydney. My friends call me Sid, though I prefer a different name. <laughs> Want me to whisper it to you? He smiles languidly, leaning on his elbows against the counter. The effect is more laugh-inducing than playful. Right. He means to spy her like that. Never taking his gaze off you, he reaches under the counter, loses his balance, and clips his chin on the desktop as he falls down. Hmm. A full minute later, he reappears, grimly rubbing his jaw with a thick logbook. He thumbs through it for a long period, squinting nearsightedly. Eventually, he gives up the struggle and reluctantly puts on his glasses. The silver taps his finger on the glass. Slide your hands through the window, and I'll remove your handcuffs. Well, that's better. Looks like you haven't received your uniform yet. And by the way, I don't just pass out equipment. I'm also available for trade. Interested? Humane cuffs, a modern restraint device used while transporting Orange Wing employees, consists of two small steel bracelets with built-in tasers that delivers a shock if the wearer handles or attempts to use a firearm. Right. Ask him to issue. Uh, ask him to issue your equipment. Maynard smiles at you over his glasses, practically stripping you naked with his gaze. Your voice is enchanting, my lady. I could listen to it forever. But right now, you need to listen to me. I am going to give you some instructions. These are the rules. <sighs> I'm listening. Sidney fiddles with his hairstyle. So, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Life under the dome can be dangerous. You may get shot. Spill acid on yourself, get electrocuted, or suffer the effects of a dangerous anomaly. You may also freeze to death or get fried. So that's a lot of information. Let's see here. Get shot, mechanical damage. This type of damage includes gunshot wounds as well as injuries inflicted by melee weapons or the other ones received during hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mechanical resistance stat is responsible for the ability to withstand injuries of this type. Acid, biochemical damage. This type of damage includes exposure to harmful chemicals and pathogens, insects, bites, poisoning of all types, damage from cigarettes and medical substances. The ability of the body to withstand damage of this type is reflected by the chemical, biochemical resistance stat. Uh, electrocuted, electrocuted energy damage. This type of damage includes electric shocks. Exposure to charge matter and injuries sustained from energy weapons. The ability for the body to withstand damage of this type is reflected by the energy resistance stat. Anomaly psionic damage. This type of damage includes the one caused by psi abilities, anomalies, direct or indirect effects of the maelstrom. The effectiveness, uh, effectiveness of resisting damage of this kind is determined by the psychic resistance stat. Freeze to death, cryonic damage, cryogenic damage. This type of damage includes frostbite resulting from exposure to anomalies, cooling chemicals, refrigeration equipment and weather conditions. The body's ability to withstand the effects of low temperatures is reflected by the cryogenic resistance stat. Heat damage or get fried. This type of damage includes burns caused by an open flame, explosions, hot objects or corresponding anomalies. The success of resisting this type of damage is determined by the heat resistance stat. That's why it's important to wear protective equipment when traveling outdoors. 
Of course, in hazardous situations, the equipment will get damaged, and the more it's damaged, the more often one has to repair it. The Silver steps back from his counter to indicate the repair kit boxes piled in the back of the warehouse. Right. He points back at the shelves behind him. We've got repair kits for this gear. There are Blue Wing specialists ready to help you at any large base, of course, but they're not always available, so you'd better learn how to use repair kits and workbenches on your own. It's a useful skill. Sydney leans on the counter again and throws you a lazy wink. No one would ever say no to a cutie pie like you, though. Those are all the instructions, by the way. Shall we get to the giving part now? The silver disappears into the back for a while and returns with a small package. Unfolding the package, Maynard shows you a brand spanking new uniform. Sydney fingers an orange jacket, pants, and heavy boots. Jackpot! You got a brand new set. Don't be surprised. Some folks in Orange Wing have to make do with rags. He raises a finger. One more important thing. In accordance with Order 16-225, helmets and gloves are not issued, but they're available for purchase from me. Please bear in mind that a full set includes headgear or a mask, jacket, trousers, gloves, and boots. Barter. The dome is isolated from the outside world and therefore provisions, household items, equipment and weapons are of particular value. Perhaps that is why the culture of barter is so developed here. You can not only buy the necessary stuff for money, but also exchange them for something you don't need. Just remember that not all residents of the dome are willing to trade with you. And the price at which you can buy something is always higher than the price at which you can sell it. Sydney hands you the package. Here is your uniform. Enjoy! Say that you're interested in seeing what he has for sale. Sydney waggles his eyebrows. Anything up to a star in the sky, my dear. Here, take a look. Trade is an important element of encased. While playing, you will meet characters who can who you can trade with either by choosing the related dialogue option or by clicking the barter button in the dialogue interface. Take a look at the goods. Sydney leans on the counter. Honestly, lady. I'd sell you this entire place and give you an incredible discount if I could. But I'm not the one who sets the prices. Let's see, so we have boots, we have pants, and we have a shirt. Capacious backpack. Defense class plus one, encumbrance plus eight, evasion minus five. Uh, let's see, these cost fifty. Tech plus five. Initiative plus one. Remember, our honest work will make the world Night watch a cap. Place. World, a better place. Engineer's cap. Worker belts. Light weapons plus five. <laughs> mm. Let's uh, let's hold on until we find something, uh, some more stuff to trade. Then maybe we could see about getting uh, some gloves, maybe a belt, maybe a hat as well. The silver follows you with his gaze. Right, see you, Sydney. Let's. Put on some pants and a jacket and some boots. We look a little bit more presentable now. Anything urgent, Mr. Krachkov? Katarzyna, 
Did you mark it as class one again, instead of two? Look, here's the scanner data. It says the relic is a scientific device. Wait, but it's still class one. I'm not going to violate protocol. Katarjina, my dear. You may violate protocol, as long as it benefits the company. Take your lead from your colleagues. Correct your report if you have to, and don't act so innocent. Vladimir, I'm done. How do we mark it? Class two fragile. Tell Noyan the relic should go out with today's flight. Think about it. A class two relic will mean a bigger payoff for the company, and that means a bonus in your wages. Categorizing it as class two means access to state sealed bids. I bet the Brits will buy it. They're always trying to one up us. All right, Mr. Krashkov. I'll correct my report. Carl, add sealed bids to the marking. Uh, some more trash cans. Let's see if there's anything in it. Do those stack? Yeah. No smoking. Scissors. A common pair of scissors. Can we sit? We, oh, we can sit down. Look at us. I'll complain to the Silvers about that idiot. Moving between the appropriate measures. Moving between locations. The game world is fast and divided into many separate locations, some of which may be temporarily inaccessible. Transitions between locations usually look like doors sealing off a darkened area, hatches or specially marked areas. If the way is free, click on them and the character will open the portal and move through. Let's talk to Maxim here. An engineer in a bright blue jacket is tinkering with the door lock, cursing under his breath non-stop. Blowing a curly strand of hair off his forehead, he turns to him. Well, he's tinkering, uh, he's tinkering us instead of the door right now. Tell your orange crony I'm gonna stick this chewing gum where the sun don't shine. Just arrived and he's already damaging property. Mind you, he fucked you over as well. You'll have to wait until I get this sorted out. If you ask me, they're too gracious about those guys over in Crystal Sands. The technician points angrily at the lock on the door. His badge reads, Maxim Penkovsky, technician. Boarding area. Ask him whether he can open the door. Penkovsky grunts angrily. <laughs> I wish I could. I'm gonna have to disassemble, clean and reassemble it to get it working. It's work I don't need. And all thanks to some idiot. Maxime extracts a thin, sharp, precision probe from behind his ear and dangles it in front of you. As an orange, I'm sure you know what this is. But in case you don't, I can teach you to pick locks. It's a useful skill. You'll see. He looks at you expectantly. Hmm. So, is he trying to do, uh, is he trying to trap us? I'd like to learn, I'd like to learn how to pick locks, but can we trust him? Let's, let's, let's see. The blue's getting excited. All right, looky here. Well, he seems uh, quite excited about it. Penkovsky presses his pick lock and an odd device resembling a hybrid of a screwdriver and a can opener into your hand. Using a mechanical pick lock is easy peasy. No special skill required. They wear out after a few locks. While the old fashioned kind is another thing entirely. Cheap, one use. But one has to know how to use it right. That's a tool for a master. Maxime takes out another pick lock and crouches by the door. He gives you a quick lesson on how to pick a lock. By the way, you can carry your tools in your belt. It's much handier to have them right there. Penkovsky shows you his utility belt, where he keeps all kinds of tools and gadgets. Utility belt. Each Cronus employee has a versatile belt in which one may carry and quickly access m medical supplies, tools and other equipment. The belt is accessible from your inventory in the lower right corner of the character panel. 
Actually, finding tools under the dome is no problem at all. There are even devices for hacking terminals and so on. Maxime hoists up his belt. The blue solemnly raises his index finger. And one more thing. Always use brand name stuff if you can. Groovy produces good kits. Modus and Supercolor do too. They've all got fat contracts with Cronus, so they care about quality. He looks at the door again. Damn these locks. Though I'd rather be doing this than fixing hab pods. Those are a real pain in the ass. What's wrong with hab pods? Penkovsky gives you a patronizing look. Because they're poorly made, warped from the heat, and the filters aren't worth a damn. The modules were constructed by marketing managers, not engineers. Building a city in the desert was also their idea. This project is all about PR. Cronus wants to show the world how tough they are. Hmm. Let's leave him to it. Locks and lockpicking. Throughout the game you will come across locked doors or containers. Unfortunately, you, uh, fortunately they can be unlocked. Use the right button on a locked door and select the desired ability from the list. The use of special lockpicks increases the chance of success, but those usually depletes, deplete rather quickly. In addition, you can break down the door with brute force, or if there is a terminal nearby, try to open the door with it. Very well. We learned how to lockpick, it seems. But I repeat, get a lockpick and attach it to your utility belt, and then um, apply it to the door. Yes, apply is the proper word. Very well. 